We visited this iconic building on Father's Day. I had always wanted to come and see it ever since I first saw it in 1974. Then it was not possible as it was operational and only employees were allowed in. The power station in fact comprises of two power stations. Power station A was built between 1929 and 1935 and power station B was built between 1937 and 1941. It is located on the south bank of River Thames in Nine Elms, Battersea and Inner London district. The station is one of the world's largest brick buildings and is noted for its lavish art deco interior. Until the 1930s, electricity was supplied by municipal undertakings. These were small power companies that built power stations dedicated to a single industry or group of factories and sold any excess electricity to the public. These companies used widely differing standards of voltage and frequency. In 1925, Parliament decided that the power grid should be a single system with uniform standards and under public ownership. Several of these companies got together and formed the London Power Company, who were granted the license to build the power station. The proposal was made in 1927 for a station built in two stages and capable of generating. 400 megawatts of electricity when Welcome complete. Welcome to lift 109 at Battersea Power Station. Please approach the walls and see how you can ignite the sparks to begin your journey. We're at the heart of the power station, deep inside the fiery depths of the furnaces. The power station was one of the most advanced of its time incorporating the latest technology and engineering innovations. At the peak of their powers, the furnaces generated a heat so intense with an incandescence so bright, it's been said that it was impossible to look at with the naked eye. conceived to address the growing demand for electricity in London in the 1920s, and the site was chosen due to its proximity to the River Thames, allowing direct access to cool water and coal delivery. To make this electricity, water was pumped directly from the River Thames to the boilers, where it was heated to evaporation, transforming into steam. The steam was then released under such pressure that it created a rush of energy that was harnessed to drive the wheels of the giant turbines. Since being decommissioned in 1983, Battersea Power Station has become a true It was built by the Thames as it required, on average, 340 million gallons of water each day and burnt a million tons of coal annually. The power station remained under private ownership until 1948, when it was nationalised. It provided around a fifth of London's electricity needs and even supplied current to Buckingham Palace and the Houses of Parliament. The building's dimensions measure 520 feet by 560 feet, with the roof of the boiler house standing at over 600, 160 feet. Each of the four chimneys is made from concrete and stands 338 feet tall, 
with a base diameter of 28 feet deep, tapering to 22 feet at the top. On 20th of April 1964, a fire at the power station caused power failures throughout London, including the BBC television centre, which was due to launch BBC Two, a second television channel, that night. The launch was delayed until the following morning. Nearly 40 years after the lights were switched off, Battersea Power Station opened its door to the public on 14th of October 1922, marking the first time the public were able to explore the iconic building, shops, bars, restaurants and leisure venues. The best way to get to the station is on the Northern Line. We enjoyed our day at the power station and especially the ride up one of the chimneys. I hope you liked the video.